diamond core saws have the amazing ability to cut through solid pieces of rock using a blade that doesn't even have any teeth. Using them can be a little bit tricky and you want to get the best possible samples with the minimum amount of effort and the maximum amount of safety. So to tell you how to do that, we've got Mike here who's been doing it for over 40 years. First let's look at how the saws actually work. There's all different types of blades but they're all very much the same. They have bronze sintering around the outer edge of the core blade. It's impregnated with industrial diamonds. Now the diamond saw does not cut like a wood saw, it's actually a grinding tool. The cut lines in your saw help the water flow come into the saw and it helps wash away the ground residue. Now let's take a look at manual versus auto saws. There's basically two different types of saws. These saws were basically adapted from the early brick saw and we can guide the core through the blade of the saw. We call this an automatic saw. You put the material into a boat and the saw actually drags it through the blade. Before you start cutting, you need to prepare the machine. The first process is to uh, check your saw over. If there's any cracks or fractures within your blade, you've got to replace the blade. You undo your blade. When you put it in, you also have to line that up, put your blade back onto your saw, you grease your bearings. You pull the saw down so that the actual front edge of that blade is just slightly below the cutting line of your V-plate. The blade will then run down the centre line of your V-plate of your trolley. Bring power to your saw, adjust your water flow. If you've got too much water flow, the grit gets taken away from the blade and the blade becomes like bird. Not enough water flow the grit that you're cutting out of the saw or the pieces you're cutting out saw tends to build up against the saw and it tends to jam or gets harder to push the core through. That's about what I consider right. Obviously that's too much, you've just got water going everywhere. PPE is a must to work safely with a diamond saw. You'll need boots or gum boots with steel caps. Remove all jewellery. Gloves for the saw are optional, they, um, but if you do wear them, they should be tight fitting. Earplugs, your PPE, and use a uh, dust mask. You have your glasses. A few simple rules will help you to work safely with the saw. You're keeping yourself clear of the front of that blade. You don't put your fingers or your hands over your core to hold your core behind where the blade is. You're controlling the trolley by your palm your hands, and you're just simply guiding or holding the core in position to go through. Longer pieces or really longer pieces, ideally you want it just so it fits in the saw blade at the end of your trolley so you've got control of that piece going through the saw. Here's the cutting procedure for the manual saw. You'll have it either an orientation line or a cutting line. You want to cut to the right hand side of that line. You're placing it so it is actually left of the blade line where you're going to cut. Cut about an eighth an inch off that line. Turn your core back to your tray. I personally will put a line across the core. You're marking in your, your meterage, 400 meters. That's returned to the core. And the second piece that you're going to sample will be marked again with your meterage. And then it's returned back into the tray. Now let's look at the startup procedure for the auto saw. It's exactly the same as the hand saw. The only difference is this has a chain drive which that hooks onto your boat. The chain takes the actual boat and the core through the blade. So you turn your water on. Your water's flowing through to your blade. Start your saw and your chain drive turns on. The cutting procedure for the auto saw is quite different to the manual saw. Just keep that down hole. You select your core with your cutting line so it's down hole. It's placed in there so it will cut off center of your cutting line. It's closed in. You place the boat into your core. The boat will be pulled through the saw by the chain. Let the water drain out of your saw. You can take your pieces of core that have cut through your saw. Again, your cutting line is still to the right and the piece you're going to cut will be returned back into your tray Let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of the two types of saw. So the safety advantage for the operator is you're not holding the core 
in your hand at the point of where you cut it. The disadvantage of this saw is when you get really fractured core, the blade tends to push or flick pieces of core around a bit. The other disadvantage of this, if you just want small pieces cut, obviously putting a small piece into the boat, when it cuts, it flicks around and gets turned over and tends to jam the blade. You lose some of the personal touch or the experience of the operator, you lose that. Now let's look at a typical sampling procedure for core that's been cut. The geologist or person in charge of the core in the field should provide the operator with what we call a cut sheet, which gives them the sample numbers they are using and the meterage to go of each sample number. So you will sample from that core tray where it's broken and fractured, the best as possible, you'll take half the representative core to your bag. When you get to your section that you've actually cut in half, you'll take the top half of the core that you've cut, leaving the bottom half in your tray, and that will go to sample. That will be the one metre half core sample to go to the lab. You can also have standards blank, so they will tell you at what point you're going to put in a standard Regular cleaning of the saw is important to avoid contamination of samples. You want to wash your machine down and clean it all off. Check your machine for any wear. Uh, your motor is sealed. Your electronics, these, these are actually sealed. Nothing. So you can wash quite literally, wash down as much as you can. So all the material is washed out of there so at each day when you come back, when you're cutting next day, if pieces of core dropped in and stuff, you don't have contamination of core from one day to the next day. So that's an introduction to how diamond core saws work and how to use them safely and efficiently. Machines and procedures may vary a little at each work site, but the general principles will be the same. This is the highlights version for YouTube. If you'd like some more detail, then go to the link up there somewhere. And for the price of a very short piece of drill core, you'll get access to the full set of 13 videos and you'll also help me make more videos like this one.